Oh, okay, I'm Joseph Binning, composer and welcome to Purgatory. I'm Tony Cook, the writer, and I play Taylor, and I'm producing the film as well. I'm Jean Fallon's director. I'm Scotty Spiegel, executive producer. I'm Georgina Sherrington, I'm playing Skinny Sherrington. Guys, it's fantastic to have you here. Um, the most obvious question, what does it mean for you to bring this wonderful project here to London uh, MCM Comic Con? Um, it's just excellent, really, to, to be able to come here with these guys, to have such a, a great you know, cast and crew on board, and to be able to, to come and, and show that to, to the Comic Con audience. I mean, it means a huge deal to mm. us. Obviously, Comic Con's a, a great place and, and has a fantastic audience. But, I mean, I've been blown away by yeah. you know, the, the amount of... The amount of love that people have got for the project. Uh, really, really pleased. So, uh, yeah, really, really happy to be here and, uh, and delighted to share some exclusive stuff as well. And for people who aren't familiar with the project, can you just tell us what it's all about, the concept behind it? Yeah, it's, um, it's basically a feature film that goes, it explores heaven and hell in an entirely new, new light. And then we have um, three new arrivals that arrive in, in purgatory, um, expecting to find it, you know, as, as you would. But they get there and realise that it, everything's a mess and that heaven and hell are at war basically between the two. And, uh, and they arrive in this completely destroyed afterlife and they've got to try and find a way through that to, to survive and, and see if there's any way they can make things right. And uh, for the actors, can they maybe just tell us a little bit about where their characters fit into that story? That's me. Um, I'm playing Skinny Shaitan, who is a demon, uh, so, so I've escaped hell, um, and I'm a motorcycle riding predator, and it's a really, it's a really great role, so I basically make the, the lead character's lives pretty difficult. <laughs> <laughs> bad girl. Yeah. <laughs> what was it about being the bad girl that appealed to you? It's a fantastic, it's a fantastic female role, because it's an unusual one. Um, there's, there's no sex, there's no underwear, there's no kissing, there's full-on action, um, Chasing, chasing people, and it's it's an exciting role, and it's an exciting one. I think coming from the health side. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, and um, I'm playing Taylor. He's basically the audience's every man that can kind of be their eyes through the entire story, but there's a hidden side to him that slowly kind of is unveiled throughout the script. And yeah, he basically carries the journey of the team, doesn't he? He's the leader. Yeah. Yeah. Just looking for reassurance. I'm a leader. Yeah. I'm a leader. Yeah. <laughs> I want awkward time to ask for reassurance. <laughs> so how did this whole concept arise? Were you just sitting sort of one day and thought, this would be a great idea, or has it been in development for quite a while? No, one, one of the writers I'd worked with before, he came to me with an idea and basically said he was at Waterloo train station and thought how great it would be if these trains were taking people to purgatory. Not those trains that day, that's really morbid. <laughs> <laughs> but. That kind of developed and we grew from that and we started trying to plan a TV series and then obviously at the time no one was really funding TV series. So we started developing it and then I met Gene and I carried on working with it and then me and Gene really fleshed it out and got a lot, a lot deeper into the story. And it brought Scott on as well, who's obviously a legend when it comes to anything like writing as well, really. <laughs> <laughs> you can pay me later, Scott. <laughs> it was brilliant to have Scott's input on it as well. So it kind of just built up from there, really, to become what it is now. There was a huge reaction on the floor downstairs when uh, Brian Blessed arrived. And the cult icon, of course. So what was it like for you guys to get to work with him? I mean, Brian's just such a, a legend. We, we knew that having Brian on board. As soon as we, we got the, the go from Brian, we knew that, you know, we were on to a winner there. Um, it's, just, it's just one of those actors that's just so appealing. And um, when, when the first time I thought, you know, that's really the guy. He was, he, was, he was on something on TV and been thinking, who would be the perfect guardian, Paul? And then like, at that moment, you know, Brian Bassett suddenly comes on TV. And then that was it. It's like, there's no one that could do this better. He's got that, got that kind of happy-go-lucky side. And he can be really deadly serious. And that's exactly what we want with this, you know, mm. a real wide um, range from an actor. And, and, you know, Brian is just perfect. He's got the look. He's got the appeal. He's just so great. And he's got the voice. <laughs> it was a 1 a.m. phone call, wasn't it? He literally phoned me straight away. It's just like, I found him. I was like, who? Who have you found at 1 in the morning? <laughs> and he said, Brian. And it just, it just made sense from there. And our casting director did a brilliant job. And it was weird because there I was in America, and I had just watched an episode of one of my all-time favorite shows, the original 60s Avengers. And there he was in an episode called The Superlative Seven with Donald Sutherland and Charlotte Rampling. And then you tell me about two weeks later, I'm like, okay, just weird 
coincidence, but how perfect is this? Because I mostly knew Brian, of course, from Flash Gordon and many other things, but I had just saw this Avengers episode. I'm going, oh, I didn't even know he was, I mean, without the beard. My God, it was pretty amazing. So <laughs> just great stuff. Very lucky to uh, have snagged Brian and that he loves the project so much. Yeah, he said he signed on after reading the first five pages of the script. It's great. Yeah. How'd you like the rest? <laughs> <laughs> And I guess obviously whenever you're uh, taking on material that deals with kind of heaven and hell and kind of religious themes, there's always a lot of sensitivity around that. I'm, I'm curious kind of if that's something that you were mindful of and how it's impacted your approach to production. Yeah, absolutely. It's something I've been really, really excited about, actually. The fact that, you know, it's something that is completely different because, you know, you often have hell portrayed as this kind of really hot, fiery place, but for some reason everyone can, can talk and it's, it's fine. And you have heaven, you know, everyone's there and you've got clouds and stuff like that. I wanted to get rid of that entirely. You know, the verisimilitude is so important for me on this. It's realism right down to the core. So heaven is a physical place where you can interact with people, you can touch them. And then same in hell, but hell is just such a ferociously, horrendously horrible place. You can't even have a conversation. So for the rest of eternity, the idea of never being able to talk, because it's just such a, an awful place, and you'll see why. You know, that for me, making a real horrible hell, and the heaven that people would want to go to, and then basically having that hell attack heaven, you know, that you've just got a complete mess. And being very mindful of... of you know, religious audiences. Mm -hmm. It's specifically not a religious film, but at the same time, you know, we've done everything that you can take experts from from the Bible. You can read them, and you can entirely interpret them as we've done it. That's the key thing. So there's nothing that goes against what the Bible says, but it's just the way you interpret it, and that's the thing. So we, we've, we've decided we didn't want to upset anyone, but we wanted to be able to take that license to be able to make this a really amazing location with some great characters, and that's what we've done. So where else did you draw inspiration from for this kind of project? Um, there's there's lots of story elements from I mean many different places. You've got um, you've got love interest there. You've got all sorts of action. So you know there's there's elements taken out of Lord of the Rings. You know you know the way you, in terms of which it looks the the landscape. We've got got some kind of Lord of the Rings there, and you can go the other end and you've got like Star Wars kind of. Star. So, you know, there's there's all sorts of, of different references that we kind of plot little parts from and just been able to come up with this this one thing which I think is, is brilliant. And also Bust. there's so many directors obviously that we're we're huge fans of and writers as well. Like we wanted to incorporate almost the comedy styles of Joss Whedon mm. because just love the way it goes from such serious stuff to so funny. So it just made sense to kind of put that on as well because it's something we love. Yeah. So hopefully the audience would love that as well. Okay. Was it difficult to balance all of those different themes and have the comedy and the action and the epic feel together? Yeah, that's why the main drive is the ensemble cast. Because if we just tried to go with one or two leads, it just wouldn't have been able to work out. So that's why we put in key characters as well. So they had, obviously you can have the witty one-liners coming from certain characters and the, the pathos from others is just... So we didn't want it to be too too dark and too heavy, because mm. I find that some some of these you know ad adventure, fantasy epics can really get kind of real dark and get a bit too deep. Whereas you know we want it to be something that audiences are going to enjoy. So we have got that you know those lighter elements, like you said, the Joss Whedon style. Even you know you can be in something really tense. You know could have made something else, and it just kind of breaks that just enough. So it kind of makes the next scene that a little bit more tense because you've kind of got that awkward break there. So, and that's one thing the we try to, to do. He uses characters like Nathan Fillion just to drop a one-liner and suddenly it flips how you feel about the scene. It's just those kind of amazing little twists we're hoping we can achieve as well. So what was it like to compose um, the music for a film like this? Well, this, is, this film's a, like a, a music composer's dream. I mean, from the variation of like, emotive, emotive states, you've got, um, you've got these really nice intimate moments where you can kind of actually build up on character themes and have them progress in, in, in different ways throughout the film and then brilliant epic action so it's 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 I'm really excited to just experiment with some of these characters and, and some of these amazing scenes so I think I think yeah no I think it's it's everything a comp composer could dream of really it's, it's awesome thanks mate <laughs> <laughs> um, got time for one more if there is one or um, well, I guess, I mean, just obviously we've got some of the cast here today and we've talked about Brian. Um, are there any other characters, uh, people who aren't here today, but you think audiences are going to be particularly uh, interested by or, or kind of bring a lot to the story? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've got uh, we've got a few that, that can be here. Um, we've got James Buckley from the Inbetweeners, um, who's playing one of the, the the kind of more comic relief characters, just to take that that slight edge off. Um, we've got Gillian Murray as Danny, one of our leads. Um, so you know she's been in, in a lot of things and, and Halo Three. Mm-hmm. So that you know there's a lot of of interest there from typical Comic Con audiences, really. Um, and the main one being um, Bruce Campbell. Um, we've got him involved, and we're so thrilled to have him on board. We and can't thank Scott enough for that, really. No, that's it. And Bruce, uh, yeah, <laughs> such a, such a great character actor, and I uh, was so pleased to, to have him on board. Um, and I think he's going to be just a huge draw for audiences as well. And who does Bruce play? I can't go too much into that. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly mysterious. <laughs> 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 it's Bruce Campbell again.